Welcome back to this I-24 News Evening Edition. This is the Daily Debate. Today we have for you uh, real girl power. Tomorrow it finally starts the Sochi Winter Olympics. Since the end of the Cold War, there hasn't been an Olympic Games that caused so much controversy. The issues of security, threats, gay rights and corruption all came up in the last year in the international media. And joining me tonight is Dr. Olena Bagno. Good evening. Welcome back. A uh, research Good fellow evening. at the Institute of National Security Studies and Paula Slear. Good evening. Uh, Middle East Deborah Sheaf at the Russia Today uh, TV. And uh, let's try to understand what are the interests that stand behind this game. Well, I if I can kick off, I mean, I think for Putin, it's it very much is a personal pet project. It's a chance for him to put Russia on the map. You also had the last Olympics that were held in Moscow in 1980, and you had something like more than 60 countries boycotting that because of the Soviet Union's in invasion of Afghanistan. So I think for him, it's an opportunity to redress that. It's an opportunity to show the might of Russia. There's a lot of concerns, as you said, around security. So obviously, he'll want this to be a very safe Olympic, and, and that will be something that will extend beyond beyond just the Olympic Games and in the, in the idea that Russia is safe. Also a way of marketing Sochi, a potential tourist site. I mean, the largest amount of money in Olympic history has been spent on these Olympic Games. Also the largest security operation ever. So he's invested a lot in these games. I completely agree to that. Just to bring a bit of a background figures, Sochi is uh, situated 300 kilometers away from Chechnya and 400 kilometers away from Dagestan. And Dagestan, as we all know, suffers daily um, outbreaks of violence. And uh, the last three deadly bombings were in Volgograd, which is also not far from uh, Sochi. So uh, they had to address all this security. And on the top of all this, also some... Um, Delegations received the threats of uh, um, attacks. Uh, the delegations from Italy, uh, Hungary, and some other uh, some British, Britain, Germany sir, received letters, and uh, all these had to be addressed by. Um, Putin and his uh, security mm -hmm. forces. Um, just to, to give you some figures, this is, these games are the most expensive games in the history, $51 billion spent on air, also on security arrangements. And the security arrangements are, um, I would say, um, layered in three um, different uh, areas, the low-tech, the high-tech, and uh, um, the international cooperation. Within the low-tech, uh, just to give you some context, um, 100,000 people uh, is law enforcement agents are going to be deployed in Sochi, and it's four times more than uh, they were deployed in London during the London Olympics. Um, Sochi is a very small city. It's about 300,000 people. So if you go to Sochi these days, um, every fourth person, including the babies, would be the law enforcement agent. You know, I'm trying to think. We're talking about the security, and we're talking about uh, prestige, and we're talking about that it's so important for Russia to have and host these Olympic Games in Sochi. But on the other hand, we see the corruption, we see the laws against uh, gay uh, and gay rights, we see the threats that Russia is getting. And I don't think that this is a very good PR. Well, it depends where your focus is. On the one, if I unpack, let's say, for example, the laws on the gays. So, so much attention is being made about the whole issue of this law that went into effect about six months ago. But to put the record straight, what the law basically says is that there cannot be any promotion of homosexuality to minors, to people under the age of 18. Mm -hmm. And any kind of in-your-face, blatant, pro-gay demonstrations are also banned. Now, the whole world has gone hysterical over that. You have world leaders saying that they're not prepared to come to Russia. And, and in a lot of respects, just looking at the media coverage, it's almost taken away from, from the games themselves. Yeah. But there's a few important points to make. The first is that... Putin's popularity at the moment is the highest it's ever been in 10 years. Now, I'm not saying it's because of his views on homosexuality at all, and I'm not supporting his views on homosexuality. But what I am saying is that we're looking at a very conservative society, and we're looking at an environment in the world's media where there's been a lot of Russia bashing. I'm, I'm not sure if you'll agree with me, but my sense is particularly recently, you've had all this criticism, as you say, about corruption, about Russia's position on Syria, about the gay laws, and 
there's a sense amongst many Russians that they need to have this great protector, and that's how Putin is presenting himself, as somebody who can protect the Russian population against this ill-informed Western world that is really pointing fingers, and, and no country really wants to have fingers pointed at it and have the rest of the world taking the higher ground. But, but can you really uh, disconnect, like, the culture from the politics, for example, the sports from the politics? You cannot, because Russia is on the headlines every single day with the Iranian issue, with the Syrian issue. You cannot disconnect this and pretend that oh, we just want to bring you good sport. No, but sport. you can also point fingers and say that there's hypocrisy. For example, let's take the American President Barack Obama. He talks about, I think the quote was something that um, he has no time for Russia's gay laws. Mm -hmm. um, but the same president made the comment that there's a great long history of friendship between America and Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia executes homosexuals. Russia homosexuality is not illegal. Mm -hmm. So your point is valid, but it's also valid to look at it in the sense that why is so much attention being paid on corruption and Russia's gay laws? And, and there are many who feel that this is hypocritical, it's double standards, and it needs to be viewed in that kind of context as well. I completely agree to that, and especially this is an internal uh, sense that you would receive from Russians. On the other hand, if you look at the uh, public opinion polls of Levada Center, recent polls, um, only 50 percent of Russians are supporting the games, and they actually believe that Putin did the right thing when he offered uh, to host the Olympics. So I would say that I would take it one step for, um, uh, further and suggest that this is going to be the test for Putin more domestically than internationally, because internationally the community is ready to uh, understand and to, to receive the perception that we are not safe, 100 percent safe in any place in the world. But domestically, this is a test for Putin's power and for the system that he built. Um, the exact thing that I want to touch, why does he need to show his power out? Why is it a demonstration? This demonstration of power. What he's an elected leader. He still needs popular support to, to be in power. He's not there. He, he's not an authoritarian leader as we, uh, again, this is a sense uh, internally, internationally more than it is domestically. So he's very concerned about uh, his I popular support. I agree with that. Support. I think if these were games were happening in the United States, you would also have America trying to show itself as being able to host such games. Uh, London, the last time it hosted the games, it, very much Olympic Games are going to be a, p a PR effort for any kind of country. So in that respect, of course, he wants to present Russia in a very, very positive light. And what better opportunity to do it than, on, than at something that's on such a big scale as the Winter Olympic Games? So if we're looking at the Winter Olympic Games, and if we're, is, what is he going, except from the showing the power and showing that he can control the country, can he try to make other things disappear? Or after the Olympic Games, everybody will continue probably talking about the bad things that Russia were in the headlines for a long time. They will definitely talk about the bad things because this is the nature of international community, especially when we deal with Russia. But if everything goes uh, fine as planned with the games, then this event, as Paul already mentioned, is going to be a point of consolidation for Russia's um, I, nat national identity because uh, the economy is doing relatively okay compared to other post-Soviet countries, but the national identity is relatively in crisis, and Putin needs this positive event to consolidate the society around it. And these Olympic Games is a perfect um, match for this. And if I can pick up on that, something I said earlier, I think very much the perception amongst many Russians is this finger pointing from the international yes. community. So if, if you take your question one, one step further and say, is it not an opportunity for the ordinary Russian to show Russia to the international community? I think for many of them it is. I think for many of them, the amount of money that has been spent on Sochi is an opportunity to, to show a face of Russia that they would want the world to see. I want to go back to my point about how the international community perceives Russia. I mean, if you look at some of the comments that have come out of leading American and British actors against this homosexuality law, for yes. example, which is receiving a lot of attention, you've had some people saying that it is reminiscent of the way the Nazis treated Jews in World War II. You have other people saying that the Russians have nothing of value to offer the international community. So I think very real questions need to also be asked in terms of the perceptions that the world already has of Russia even before these games. And, and that's important. And it's not just about whether or not you're showing a face to the world of Russia. You're showing a face of, the, of Russia to the world 
to a world that already has an opinion of Russia. But still, the face is Vladimir Putin. The face is Vladimir Putin, but the face is also the Sochi Games. The face is also what is going to be the experiences of people who come to Sochi. Are they going to feel safe? We haven't even touched on on the efforts that are that are being made on the on the security front. But certainly, if they come and the games are safe, in light of threats that have come out from the Chechens that they're going to disrupt these games, and if Putin is able to pull off pull off a safe, free Olympic Games, that's going to send a message out to the world that Putin is strong when it comes to security. So you started uh, putting the numbers uh, out. Is he going to be able to keep this uh, game safe? As I already mentioned, there's no place in the world that is 100% safe. But if we think, if we look into the um, investment that he put into this, these are going to be the most secured games in history, and the all the whole region is sealed. It's sealed internally and externally. There are different kinds of zones, uh, the control zones that you cannot enter. All the uh, Olympic facilities, if you want to enter them, you need to go through scanners and x-rays and all sorts of metal detectors uh, before you can get in. And there are also zones that are forbidden. Um, also, you cannot enter. It, it, with your vehicle to the city of Sochi, which is good. It's uh, um, saved the um, local uh, population from traffic jams. Traffic they are jams. very happy yeah. with it, about this. But um, seriously speaking, if your the vehicle is not registered in the city of Sochi or it's not accredited with the Olympic Committee, it cannot enter. And then you have, again, uh, on the border with Abkhazia and the border with Georgia are completely sealed. Um, what else? Um, as I said, there are army units deployed, and then the sea, the sea is also sealed, and they also use a very sophisticated uh, space-based uh, surveillance system, which allows them to monitor all phone calls and all internet connection. It's amazing. In the city. You know, what Everything. you're saying, it's <laughs> like getting into a closed place. It's like uh, people are Absolutely. saying that Israel is a city that but all the time it's is gonna worried be much about safer security. Than <laughs> but, but, but can I say that there, um, I'm sure the two of you saw it, there was an alert that came out today from the United States that they had some kind of information that there could be explosives smuggled in on planes in toothpaste tubes. Now, right. they're not giving any kind of indication why they've got that. Also, the UK said that they think that the possibility of a threat is highly likely. And the US has sent two warships to the Black Sea to help in case of an emergency. So yes, we have this massive security operation, but you also have Sochi, which is very mountainous. You also have it, as you correctly said, very close to the Northern Caucasus. It's also a mixed population, so it's not immediately easy to tell who's coming from, from where and what ethnicity they are. So it's it, there's, there's quite a few problems that they're facing. And the other point is what we saw in Volgograd at the end of last year with suicide bombings there. And a lot of questions were asked at the end of last year whether or not that was linked to the, the Sochi Olympics. There are some analysts who think that maybe with all the security now focused in Sochi, this is the perfect opportunity for Chechen rebels to carry out an attack somewhere else that would also frighten people in Sochi and detract from the Olympic Games, but maybe another location might be less secure than your 40,000 security guards who are securing Sochi at the moment. So your forecast after the Sochi Olympic Games, uh, how Russia will look like? How Russia will look like? Well, it depends. I With hope all these high expectations. I hope for all of us that the, the Olympics will be a success for Russia and for, for all of us as spectators. Um, I do not think that, uh, I mean, if everything goes fine, then Putin will definitely use it as a... Uh, um, um, he will do his best. Yeah, as, as a proof for, for yes. his uh, power. I, I agree with that. I think I think at the end of the day, it's actually a sporting Ever event. Sport. Yeah, more than. <laughs> and you know that that's the message. I think people who are going there really just want to have a good experience. I think the world wants to see some good sports come out of Sochi. I don't think it's really going to do anything in terms of major long term term changing of opinions of Russia, as much as Putin is using it as an opportunity to showcase Russia to the world, I'm not sure it's necessarily going to change the way the world in the long run perceives Russia. Yeah, let's, uh, I think that at the end of the day we can say let's focus on the games and not focus on the politics for once at least, at least for these games. Uh, ladies, thank you very much for uh, coming to the studio and we're going out for a small break, 10 minutes break, and then we will be back for the i24 News 1 on one an update from our news desk 10 minutes and i'll be back